few people that we want to pray for just before we, uh, we begin our, our service this morning. I haven't forgotten what day it is, and we'll pick up on that in a few minutes. But let's just, let's just pray for Alan, who's Donnie's friend, and for Pat, who's watching in this morning, and also for Gary, just that the Lord will restore them and to heal them. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning we want to bring to you our thanks and our praise. As we have had the pleasure, Lord, of partaking of communion this morning, we thank you that, Lord, we have been fed on Christ Jesus, your Son. He is the one who sustains us. He is the one, Lord God, who upholds us and keeps us. And we thank you for him. And, Lord, we ask you this morning, please, if you will draw near to Donnie's friend, Alan. Lord, you know the condition that he's in, that it's very serious, Lord. But while he has breath, Lord, there is hope in you. And we pray for him, O oh God, please, that you would graciously draw near and heal him in the name of Jesus Christ. That you, O oh God, would remember him, that you would see him, O oh God, in his sickbed, and that you, Lord, would please take him by the hand and raise him up, Lord, please. Heal him in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for Pat this morning, Father, and we Thank you, we had the opportunity to see her briefly, Lord, here last week. Uh, but again, struck down, Father, with uh, illness, we just pray that you would be her strength and help and that you would heal her and restore her also, Lord. We pray that you would draw near to her and bless her. And even this morning, as she is participating in the service with us, that she would be very conscious of your presence, Lord God, surrounding her, please, filling her with your love. We pray also for Gary, Father. We miss him and we ask Almighty God that you would draw near to him, that you would bless him and keep him, and that you would heal him, O oh God, please, that he too would be restored to fellowship with us. But Lord, above all, may he truly enjoy, even in his, his own circumstances, may he enjoy fellowship with you. We ask this in Jesus' name. And so, Lord, as we turn to this service this morning, it's a service of thanksgiving unto you. It's a service, Lord God, of worship to your holy name. And we pray that you would speak to us, please, through your living and active word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, people probably think, you know, that I have forgotten that it's Remembrance Sunday, but I haven't. And, and so but today being Remembrance Sunday, when right across the nation, Paul's telling me to switch the thing on, that would help. So Okay, we'll start again. So today is Remembrance Sunday when right across the nation people pay respect to those who in wars and in conflicts made the ultimate sacrifice. And what a day to be doing because at the same time we have participated in communion and we remember Jesus who was the sacrifice above all sacrifices. His was the perfect sacrifice on behalf of sinners. And the proof of that is that he was raised from the dead. But as people go to cenotaphs, which a number of our people have gone to, to remember those who paid uh, the ultimate sacrifice in wars and in conflicts, and we remember also the veterans and the current servicemen and women who helped preserve and continue to help preserve the, uh, the freedoms that you and I enjoy today. So we ought to remember that. Remember it's only as a day to be thankful. However, nowadays, and I'm sure everybody has heard, you know, there's such a controversy around sur surrounding the, the wearing the poppy and laying wreaths at, at cenotaphs. And there's a blatant disrespect by others who should show a lot more gratitude. They've been given uh, refuge in our country. Mm -hmm. And yet they disrespect our country and they disrespect the members of our servicemen and women who laid down their lives or who have been injured and maimed. Uh, others who continue to serve, they disrespect them. Uh, and so there's such controversy around wearing the poppy and, and, and laying poppy leaves and, and remembrance services that there are those today who would trample underfoot the memory of our glorious fallen and disregard the debt that we owe to them because the very freedoms that we're enjoying today is because men and women lay down their lives for us that we might enjoy those freedoms. And so before I get into this message, I want to make something very clear. The poppy that I wear, it is not a fashion symbol. It's not a fashion statement. It's a symbol of remembrance and a mark of respect. 
And if people are offended by that, they'll talk. <laughs> I will continue when God gives me grace to remember the debt that I owe, and I hope that this fellowship will also remember the debt that we owe. And so, as a mark of respect, let's begin this morning and stand together and take a moment, just a minute's silence to ponder and to pay our respect. Let's stand together. <laughs> Lord, this morning, thank you, even for this minute, when we can stand and quietly contemplate and remember the sacrifice of those who led down their lives, or who gave so much of their lives to purchase the freedoms that we enjoy today. And that they be members, Lord God, of the, her, His Majesty's armed forces. And that they be, Lord God, the security forces whether they be the prison service, Lord, and others. Father, we remember their service. We remember also those who continue to serve today in battle zones, Lord God, across the world. And we thank you for their service. We ask that you would protect them and that you would keep them safe. And when their tour of duty, Lord God, is finished, that they would be returned safely home to their loved ones. Help us always, Lord, to remember the debt that we owe and never to disrespect, Lord God, the memory of our glorious fallen, our veterans and those who continue, Lord God, to serve. But may we ever give thanks to you for them in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Now, last week Denise spoke on the priesthood of all believers element of the last doctrine in Shadow's Statement of Faith. And she mentioned some really important truths which demonstrate how the priesthood of all believers, and you need to go to the statement to read what it says, but she was uh, speaking these truths, telling us that it demonstrates how the priesthood of all believers actually encapsulates the whole doctrine which reads the priesthood of all believers and the commitment of all saved persons in the church to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Now, let me just say this again, because I'm going to say some things that, that as normal might offend. We've got to be clear what it is that we're saying we believe. In our statement of faith, we say from the outset, this is what we require people to believe who want to be members of this fellowship. And the last doctrine is that we believe the priesthood of all believers. We believe in the priesthood of all believers and the commitment, there's a big issue there, the commitment of all saved persons in the church to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. A person can't call themselves saved a member of the priesthood of the, of the Lord, if they are not committed to living soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Now, if you're offended, you can be offended again because I'm going to repeat it. A person can't call themselves saved, a member of the priesthood of the Lord, if they are not committed to living soberly, righteously and godly in the present age. The two are inextricably linked. 
as Denise pointed out, the priesthood of all believers is characterized by worship, by intercession, and by witness. Worship, intercession, and witness are acts of obedience. And any priest, any saved person, not walking in obedience is not worshipping the Lord. And as members of the priesthood of all believers, as priests unto the Lord by faith in Jesus, we have full access into God's presence, into the Holy of Holies. And we can confidently approach God's throne to worship him and to petition him. And the whole issue about commitment is saying that even if I sin a thousand times a day, even if I let God down and I feel the weight of shame and guilt or whatever it is that I feel, because I've let God down, we can still, through Jesus, confidently approach God's throne of grace and say, change me. Make me the person that you want me to be. And God will always be there with arms wide open to receive us. But it's that commitment, it's that commitment that says, though all hell endeavor to shake me, still I will stand confident in this truth that I can approach the throne of grace because of Jesus Christ, my Lord. And it's a very privileged position to be able to approach God's throne of grace. It's not one to be presumed upon or to be treated lightly. Well, Denise told how um, Israel's high priest could only enter the Holy of Holies into God's presence once a year on the Day of Atonement. That was the tenth day, or is the tenth day, of what's called uh, the Feast of Trumpets, or Rosh Hashanah, I can't say the Jewish word, uh, words. This ten-day period was a time, please hear it, this ten-day period, this Feast of Trumpets, if you remember, I did a talk on it recently, where every morning there was the trumpet sound. This Day of Atonement, this feast day, was a period, for the 10 days, was a period of national preparation, please hear it, national preparation and sanctification unto the Lord. So that whole feast, even though it was a celebration, it was a time for people to uh, search themselves. It was a time for repentance. It was a time to, to look to God and say, if there be any wicked way in me, bring it to the floor that I may confess it before you because the day of atonement was coming up and the sins would be atoned for. And so this would happen every year. But on the day of atonement, on the 10th day, before the high priest could enter into God's presence, he first had to prepare himself. He had to cleanse himself with water. Do you remember I did the talk about the mikvah? He had to then put on his priestly garments and then he had to offer a sacrifice first for his own sins before making atonement for the sins of the people. And he alone, the high priest alone, was permitted to go in and out of the Holy of Holies to offer the blood of the sacrifices and to burn incense before the Lord. And as I've said many times, if the high priest didn't do this exactly as God ordered, he could instantly die. So you've got cleansing, you've got clothing, and you've got contributing or offering. And they are acts of worship unto the Lord. And the high priest actions, you've got to remember, the high priest actions were witnessed by all of the Jewish pilgrims who travelled to Jerusalem for the feast. And so we see, as Denise rightly said last week, we see how the priesthood of all believers, not just the high priest, is characterised by worship, by intercession, and by witness. Turn please to Titus chapter 2. Titus is a pastor of a church in Crete, and Paul is writing to him to encourage him. He had a very, very difficult job, uh, but nonetheless, Paul was saying, look, stick with this, stick with this, and encourage the church. In chapter 2, Paul writes, <clears throat> But as for you, Titus, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine, that the older men be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience, the older women likewise, that they be reverent in behaviour, in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers or good things, 
that they may admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Exhort bond servants to be obedient to their own masters, to be well-pleasing in all things, not answering back, not pilfering, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Saviour in all things. <clears throat> Pardon me. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. <coughs> Let me ask you a question this morning, a few questions. Christian. If you're a Christian even watching it on Facebook or on YouTube, let me ask you. Why do you come to church? What's your motive for being here? What is your purpose for coming along to a, a gathering like this? Is it because you like a good old sing-along on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night? Or is it just simply because I, 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 enjoy, I enjoy the services that show you? Or is it more for some a social event? Like it gets me out of the house. And it's more of a social occasion than it is a sincere service of praise. Perhaps it's because you've always been a church goer. You've always been a pew warmer. Or do you come to church to make a fashion statement? Do you come to church to make a fashion statement? I have written here a lot of to show off your new hat. You don't get too many women in Australia who show off their new hat. But you know, do you come to make a fashion statement to show off some new outfit that you've got? Well, are you ready, Tom? If you're into <coughs> making fashion statements, <coughs> pardon me, I don't know whether I've got a frog in my throat or a demon trying to get out. Oh, he says it's a second one. If we're going to follow trends, if we're going to follow the trends of the world, if you really want to make a fashion statement, then I would expect the men of Shiloh Christian Fellowship to come to Shiloh next week dressed like this. This is the fashion of 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Any guy that's coming here next week, you better have that one. And you women can laugh because this is what you're expected to wear in 2023. Next one, Tom. <laughs> what class is that? Absolutely fantastic. I thought, you know, sometimes the ones that were all of those wee things that you could just see it through the eyes. I thought, that was that. Look at that. This is the fashion of 2023. We're supposed to follow the trends of the world, the fashions of the world. And if that's the case, go to the third one, because this is what I have to wear when I'm preaching next Sunday morning. <laughs> And when you see that, you let me you think of Billy Connolly's Incompetence Pants. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever watched the Billy Connolly's Incompetence Pants sketch on YouTube. So you go home and watch it, and you will see. But that's what the pastor will be expected to wear next Sunday morning. And thank God we don't follow the, the trends of the world. There's some fashion statements. Did you know though, before entering God's presence, the high priest prepared, he mechvaned himself, he cleansed himself. He put on his priestly garments and then he presented his offerings to the Lord. So there was cleansing, 
There was clothing and there was then contributing his offering. A Christian priest of the Lord. How was your preparation this morning before you came to the house of the Lord? The high priest of Israel, in fact, even the priests, they had to cleanse themselves. They had to put on the God-appointed garments and then they had to present their contributions and their offerings. Cleansing, clothing, and contributing. How was your preparation this morning before you came to the house of the Lord? Through Jesus, Christians have 24-7 access into God's presence. And in God's presence, it is the Holy of Holies. How was your sanctification this morning? Before you arrive, even in through the doors of Shiloh, did you prepare yourself to present your contribution, and I don't mean putting some offering into the wee box. I'm talking about you. You are the contribution this morning. You are the offering unto the Lord. Before you arrived here, did you prepare yourself to present your contribution? So let me put it to you another way. Imagine for a moment that you were told that you must be properly prepared before coming through those grey doors of Shiloh Christian Fellowship into this main hall. And that if you haven't done so, you will die. So think about that. Imagine what the high priest had to do. Imagine now if you were told you can come through the front doors, but if you're not properly prepared and you walk through those doors, the grey doors, into this hall, if you were not properly prepared, you would die. I wonder how many of us would enter in, or how many of us would still be alive. When I said that my poppy isn't the fashion statement, but it's a symbol of remembrance and a mark of respect, well, so too was the preparation and the apparel of the high priest. In fact, the preparation of all of the devout Jews who celebrated the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement, it was an act of remembrance, of respect, and of worship, and of intercession, and of witness to the non-religious Jews or to the Gentiles. And as I mentioned last Sunday, the Apostle Paul said, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus, all who desire to follow Jesus, will suffer persecution. Therefore, pardon me, following Jesus isn't for the faint-hearted. It doesn't sound that appealing to follow Jesus, but without any doubt, it is very, very rewarding. But what have I told you? Being a Christian, being a follower of Jesus, is a fashion statement. What have I told you that this morning? Like, oh my goodness, there I have to wear that red bubble thing. All the women coming in and that pesco bag stuff. What have I told you this morning that your Christian life you being a follower of Jesus has to be a fashion statement. And if it's not a fashion statement, there is something wrong in your Christian life. Now by fashion statement, I don't mean a popular or latest style of clothing or modern trend. The priesthood of all believers, in one sense, is a fashion statement based on what you wear based on what you are. Listen to what Paul says to Titus in chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. He says, Exert bond servants. Let me just remind people about the bond servants. So when people were sold into slavery or whatever else, they were slaves to their masters for whatever length of time, and then there would come a time when they could be freed, uh, and they could choose to willingly leave their masters. But if they loved their masters, if their masters cared for them and looked after them and they wanted to continue to serve their masters, then they said that to their master. They were taken out 
to the front of the house, to a doorpost or whatever, and their ear was pierced with an awl. It was pierced with an awl, and they became what was called a bond servant. They became a slave for life, a bond servant unto their master for life. And so Paul says this, exert bond servants, those servants for life, to be obedient to their masters, to be well-pleasing in all things, not answering back, not pilfering, but showing all good fidelity, all good honesty, all good faithfulness, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. We who profess to be born-again Christians, we are born servants unto the Lord. We have committed our lives to him and to his service. We have said, Jesus, I am yours forever. Jesus, I give myself completely to you. We are called, therefore, to be obedient to our master, to Jesus, to please him in everything that we do, to be trustworthy, to be honest, and to be faithful in our commitment unto him. And then Paul adds, that they, or we, that we Christian, that's us here in Sherwood Christian Fellowship, that's those Christians watching it on Facebook and on YouTube. Paul says, that we may adorn the doctrine of God our Saviour in all things. And to adorn the doctrine of God, it's a Greek word that means it's causal. It means to put in proper order, to put on, to decorate, to make ready, to prepare, to ornament, to embellish with honour. It means, Christian, that we are to wear what we believe. We are to adorn the teachings of Jesus to clothe ourselves in the truths of God. And this is the only fashion statement a believer in Jesus should be made. And Paul wrote it another way, I think, in Corinthians when he said to them, that you are the letters that people read. But it's how we live that people read us. We can say one day, I am a Christian, I love Jesus, and then the next day we're doing something else, and those who read us think, oh, there's a bit of a hypocritical thing going on here. We are what we were. And this is why it daily requires us to prepare ourselves as we live in this world. Or particularly when we meet together to worship, to intercede and to witness. As holy priests, and that's what you are this morning. If you are a born again Christian, you are a holy priest unto the Lord. And as holy priests unto the Lord, unto the Lord as members of his royal priesthood, we are expected to make ourselves ready. We are to be cleansed, we are to be clothed, and we are to contribute, and that's on a daily basis. I said it last Sunday night, that we are to take up our cross daily and follow the Lord. We are to cleanse every day, even though Jesus, we would say, oh Jesus, I'm so sorry for all of my sin. All of your sin has been forgiven. All of your sin has been cleansed. And Jesus would say, like Peter, whenever he went to wash the feet of of Peter, and Peter says, oh, you're not going to wash me. And he says, if I don't wash you, you will have no part of me. And then he says, oh, wash all of me, all of me. And Jesus said to him, you are already made clean by the word that I have spoken to you. So Christian, you are already made clean. You have been bathed because of Jesus. You have had your sins forgiven. But as you walk in this sinful world, your feet get dirty with sin, and you've got to each day cleanse them. You've got to cleanse yourself. And the Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so what Paul is telling us is that we need to cleanse ourselves. Lord, will you forgive me for the sins that I've committed this day against you? I know all of my sins are forgiven, but I have committed my life to you. I am committed to walking in your will. Even though I have let you down so many times this day, Please, Lord God, will you forgive me? Please, will you cleanse me? And he will do so because he loves us. And he knows that we live in this world. He knows that we're constantly walking in sin and being tempted and falling into sin. And as priests unto the Lord, we have to prepare ourselves every day 
that we might worship, intercede and witness, that we might cleanse ourselves, that we might clothe ourselves, that we might contribute to the glory of God. Let me ask you something, Christian. Your life is to be a little bit like the woman who gets so, so excited when her boyfriend gets down on that one knee and shows her this gleaming ring and asks, will you marry me? And she says yes. And then she puts the ring on and she's out showing everybody. Look, look at the ring. Look at the ring. She's so excited. Like a woman proudly showing off her engagement ring, so Christians need to show off that we are priests unto the Lord by how we wear his teachings, by how we adorn the doctrine of God. And how do we do it? By living soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. So let me ask you, Christian, are you making a fashion statement this morning? Are you adorning the doctrine of God? Are you wearing the teaching of Jesus in your life so that others can see it and desire it for themselves? Are you walking in obedience to your master, Jesus, seeking to please him in everything that you do? Are you trustworthy? Are you honest and faithful? Look, it doesn't say here, are you sinless? Because you're not. But are you trustworthy? Are you honest? Are you faithful? Are you committed? Even though you may fall a thousand times, are you still committed to live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age? That's the reason why you should be at church this morning, because you're committed to make a fashion statement. You're committed to wear what you believe. As a royal priest who has made preparation you should be here to worship, to intercede, and to witness, cleanse, clothe, and contribute. You see, Christian, you're a very, very privileged position as a priest unto the Lord. It's not one to be presumed upon or to be treated lightly. You have been given the privilege of adorning the doctrine of God. God has said, I have chosen you. I have put my, if you will, engagement ring on you. And I want you to go and show everybody. I want you to let everyone see it. Your privileged position is not one to be presumed upon or treated lightly. You have been called to adorn the doctrine of God. You have been called to wear what you believe. You need to be a living example of the doctrines that you profess. I hope and pray this morning, Christian, that you can say, yes, that's me. I am committed unto the Lord and I will adorn the doctrine of God. Maybe this morning there's someone here or someone watching in and you're not yet a Christian. Well, let me just ask, how do you think God views you? How do you think he views your life? What type of fashion statement does your life proclaim? Well, because you're not yet a Christian, you're therefore not a member of the royal priesthood of all believers. And therefore, the Bible says you have no access to God. Your sin continues to separate you from God. But the good news is God wants you to know him. And, and he wants you to know his love for you. And that's why he sent Jesus to die, so you could know him, so you could receive forgiveness of sins, and so you could have everlasting life. Well, to know God, to be forgiven, and to have eternal life, you must confess your sin. You must agree with God that you are a sinner. You must repent, turn around and turn away from your sin, and you must believe in Jesus. You see, only by doing this 
can you prepare yourself to adorn the doctrine of God? And God will, as it said of Lazarus, take off the grave clothes. God will take off the old grave clothes that you wear. And he will give you robes of righteousness. And you will be prepared to adorn the doctrine of God and to serve the Lord as one of his royal priests. And I hope and pray this morning that you will come to Jesus and receive his truth. Lord, this morning we want to thank you that as born again Christians we are called to make a fashion statement not though according to the trend of the world but we're called Lord to adorn the doctrine of God to wear what we believe so that other people can see it so that other people Lord God can recognize it in us and that they Lord God can desire to be clothed in a similar way Lord thank you that we have been robed in righteousness. Thank you, Lord, that we have the garments of salvation. Thank you, Lord, that even though we let you down, even though we sin against you, you are still forgiving. You are still gracious and merciful toward us. And you still, Lord God, urge us to press forward in you because, Lord, you know what lies ahead. You know, Lord God, the glory that we shall enter into. Help us, therefore, Lord, please, help us on this Remembrance Day to remember Christ and his sacrifice because it was through his death that people like us could draw near to God, that people like us could approach your throne of grace with confidence, that people like us could be called holy priests unto the Lord adorning the doctrine of God. Will you help us, Lord, please, each day to prepare, Lord God, to cleanse ourselves by confession of sin, to clothe ourselves in the garments of praise and of worship and of thanksgiving and of intercession, Lord God. And will you help us, Lord, to contribute in whatever area you call us to serve you in, to give ourselves in all of those areas as an offering unto you. We ask this, Lord Jesus, in your glorious name. We pray also for any unbeliever this morning, that you would help them to see that you love them, and that you want them, Lord, to know your love. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask, please, that by your Spirit, you would draw people to faith in Jesus, that they too may find life in his glorious name that they may be holy priests unto the Lord, adorning the doctrine of God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.